Okay, good afternoon, my students. Sure, yeah, I will explain it. Uh, how can we use the normalization? Yeah, of course, yeah, there is a lot of way to uh, change your uh, data set. So normalization is one of them. And so, <laughs> yeah, 전철이요, yeah. And you have to think about, yeah, why you need to alter your data set before you really change your data set. So, the reason we change the data set is, yeah, for example, for the text data set, the computer, the machine learning cannot recognize the characters. So they change it to, uh, they wanted to change the text data to numbers. Yeah, that's the uh, one, uh, that's the uh, one of the way we use the pre-processing, but, or yes, if you have some categorical data then you want to change it to uh, so-called yeah, one-hot encoding. But since our uh, given data set is all continuous variables, so you don't need any specific uh, uh, way, any yeah, special uh, pre-processing like the text processing or the one-hot encoding. The normalization is yeah, one of the pre-processing uh, technique. Okay, so what is the difference between loss and value loss? So I think, yeah, now you are really starting so that I can, I wanna yeah, answer your questions. Yeah, that's good. So. Uh, I did not make it uh, as answers, so that means I'm going to ask uh, answer your questions after reviewing yeah, what kind of questions are uh, uh, shown here. Uh, submission CSV 보다 높으면 빗불인가요? 랭킹이 안 올라서 너무 걱정돼요. Don't worry, yeah, because we have a uh, lots of uh, weeks ahead of us and you you so right now the ranking is you know, for the the top students i know yet yeah, they know i know that they are able to do some sort of a machine learning so they can be ranked on the top but for those uh, other students yeah, who are just uh, learning the uh, machine learning techniques I will let you know how to uh, improve your scores. So yeah, don't worry too much. Are we doing the second competition today? Uh, actually, no, I will not do the second competition. I just wanted to explain the more fundamental things. Uh, what I mean by a fundamental thing is that we have to review what the machine learning is and we have to re review what the layer means and what's inside the node. All those kinds of things, uh, you should under understand all those kinds of things to do your first competition and second competition. They are all essential. So I'm gonna spend today for explaining some more fundamental basic things. And probably I'm not gonna talk about the second or third competitions by showing you how to yeah, do these specific things. Uh, for, the first, uh, for the first competitions, yeah, I will do it again and again for you, but for the second competition, I will leave it uh, uh, as yeah, free so that you can try many different things. So for continuous data set, you don't need pre-processing. Uh, 
I don't, I don't want to say that yeah, we don't need pre-processing for a continuous data set. I want to say that you need pre-processing, but, uh, but what I wanted to say is that there must be a purpose. So what do you want it to do on your data set? And why do you want it to do that on your data set? And then, yeah, apply some techniques. So for choosing a model, oh yeah, you can try any models. Yeah, and see the change. But today I'm going to explain the meaning of the layers and the meaning of the node inside the layer and what is the meaning explain the, the meaning of the, the activation functions, that kind of things, then you can try to modify your model based on uh, your understanding. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so if you go to the YSEC and I put the notice on the YouTube links for previous lectures. So go to your course list sections, then there are YouTube links. And right now I think I have uploaded uh, a three English version class, but for your information, there are also uh, in my YouTube channel, there is another channel. The name is the introduction to financial engineering, financial engineering that's for uh, usually for uh, juniors and senior students. And I explain the same thing in Korean. So if you prefer to, uh, if you prefer to listen, take my uh, course as a Korean, then you may take that. But this uh, video is much shorter because uh, for this course, I, I I spent yeah, two hours for the financial engineering things, and then just for one hour for the machine learning. So the overall length is much more shorter and much more quicker than yours. But the good thing is, is Korean. And then your YouTube links are under the appropriate the week uh, sections. So uh, right now, yeah, I have year three, the September 25th, uh, October 16th and October 30th. Uh, Probably I'm gonna post the last one on uh, next week. So you have at least four or five weeks before the due date. I think that's enough for uh, preparing your competitions. Oh, okay, yeah, there are a uh, public notebook uh, published in five days ago. So let me go to the Kaggle competition and the financial engineering competition won over three. And if you go to the notebook section, there are another notebook available to you. And these three, uh, Okay, let me go to yeah, who is this one? The Yonsei Om Chi Hwan. And he's a uh, student of this class, but uh, he is from the other department and he already knows a lot of the machine learning. So he uh, sent, me, uh, sent me an email that he can prefer uh, other techniques to other students so that they can learn. So I allow him to do that and he, he yeah, uploaded some other things here. For example, the random forest baseline, 1D CNN baseline, boring regression baseline. Those are all 
uh, different way, uh, different machine learning techniques that can be applied to our uh, data set. So if you want to use that, then yeah, you can refer to that. But he used this one, the sklearn instead of the TensorFlow. And sklearn is, is, is fine if you know that, but I will not spend my time explaining what it is because this is another library. So for the machine, line, machine learning library, I will teach you the TensorFlow, but there is another libraries. So as, uh, the sklearn is, is yeah, another popular one and maybe another one, the third one that I wanted to mention is the PyTorch. So probably those three are the most important, the most widely used machine learning libraries, the TensorFlow, PyTorch, and sklearn. And since he learned, I believe that he, he uh, since he started his learning with the sklearn, he wanted to show you how to uh, apply those kind of kind of things and, and it's not that bad because you can read. So for example, yeah, here is a mean absolute error and predict NY test and RF fit and ET fit. So it is going to try to yes, uh, make yes, some other models and then what is the, the mean error, that kind of thing. So, it's not so long and you can, yeah, uh, you can learn by yourself. So if you want, yeah, you can use that. And we are, uh, okay. Yes, I will load today's lecture also. But it will take some time, yeah, because uh, I need to edit, but I'm not a professional editor. So I think, yeah, I, I need some time. Okay, normalization. So let me yeah, read the uh, difference between these two. Yeah, these are previous lectures, yeah. I also believe it was the accuracy. Sure, yeah. Okay, what is the difference between loss, accuracy, prediction? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, tuning parameter is only a small change, okay. Uh, let's code better. Does it affect our score? Probably not too good. Uh, actually, it does not. Okay, let me say you, uh, let me say it in this way. The less code is better. That's true, but it does not affect your score. So whether your code is messy or clean, it doesn't matter uh, for your final ranking, but for readability and for your reference later, you have to <clears throat> make your code as concise as possible and write yeah, lots of comments, and that's a very good practice but it does not affect your scores. Yeah, <clears throat> I will not go into so detailed in the second competition. I will, of course, I will explain what the second competition is and what the basic ideas are, but I will not go into very detail like what I like what I did for the competitions. That's what I mean by I'm not going through the second competition with you. With uh yeah, with you. Okay. 
okay. We set the change shape of model in a way that big, small, small, big, but traditionally big, big. Oh, yes, 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 yeah, you're right. So the in the last class, uh, that was just an example. So what I wanted to show you in the last class is that, yeah, you can do whatever you want. You can increase the number of nodes and you can decrease the number of nodes and then increase it again. So I just wanted to show you that you can do whatever you want, but traditionally, I'm not sure yet this is tradition or not, but usually, yeah, the, it starts with a very big, uh, node and then getting smaller. And then if you study a little bit more, then there is a, another uh, technique yeah, that you first yeah, increase the, decrease the number of nodes and then later increase the number of nodes. So yeah, you're right, yeah. And the one important thing is the last one should be always one because we are going to predict just one number. So if you use the, for example, two in the last, uh, last layer, then you will get an error. Oh, sure, you should not understand the yeah, LSTM, yeah, convolution one, yet, because I did not explain anything about these kind of things. I just show you the most simple uh, regression, uh, the, the simplest dense layers so far. So if I have a chance, then I will go to the LSTM and yeah, the other things. But uh, for our problem, LSTM is not relevant. It's for the uh, something like the time series data, but we do not have a time in our data set. So the LSTM is not relevant. Okay, so does the complexity of the node matters? Yes, yeah, that's true. So that's what I'm going to try to explain today. Yeah, is there a way to take advantage of the pair plot? I was wondering whether there is a way to look at the graph and change the numbers, so anything else? Uh, Uh, actually, yeah, I, I don't understand yeah, your questions correctly. So there is a way you, uh, uh, you're wondering whether there is a way to look at the graph and change numbers. Uh, you cannot change your uh, graph interactively. You cannot do that. So you just yeah, change your original data set and then draw the graph again. So that's the way we uh, see the graph. So there is not so dynamic things in the computer programming yet. Okay. <clears throat> okay, yeah, there are yeah, so many questions. So I'm going to explain it one by one, yeah, from now on. So uh, since this student is very curious about the LSTM, it's short for long. Not end, yeah. Uh, long short term memory. M E M O model. So when we use this one, uh, this one is for uh, some data set uh, like the, so we, okay, for example, yeah. 
I love Seoul. For example, this is your text data set. And then the order matters. So if you change the order of yeah, this data set, then it has different meanings. In that case, you can use the uh, LSTM model in your layer because this layer remembers what is the first one and what is the second one, and this one affects the, this one. But for our problem, it's just, yeah, numbers, say 10, 20, 5, and predict this number. And even if you change the order of these columns, it does not affect the, the final our predictions. So that's why, uh, that's, uh, what, that's why I said the LSTM is not relevant to our model. Uh, I, 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 please don't forget. Okay, yeah, I will wait. Okay. Last last semester, I gave eighty student eighty percent of the students A plus. So that's my answer. Yes, that's right. We are predicting column five using all other columns. That's what we are trying to do. Okay, so what is the normalization layer? What is the normalization layer? So layer is a so you may think that layer is a group of functions. So I would say it's a, not, not, not the proper words for group, but of functions. And you have another set of yeah, functions on the next layer and another set of functions on the next layer. So what we are trying to do is to take some input and then apply some functions to the input, and then it produces output. And then the next layer take these output as an input and then do some transformation or do some yeah, functions, uh, apply some functions on that and then move, and move it to the transform data to the next level. And then finally, it will gives you a number which is the predicted value. So that is the basic the structure. And why do you call this a layer? Because inside this layer, we will have a lot a lots of nodes. And this node is in its ba the basic po form is just a linear function. So what that means is that, suppose we have three inputs, x1, x2, and x3. And one of the node, if you inside the one of the node, there is a function w1, x1, plus w2, x2, plus w3, x3, plus b. So that is the functional form inside just one node. And since there can be uh, many nodes uh, inside just one layer, another node also has another linear functions. So it has the same structure, but the difference is the weight. So even though I write it as yeah, W1 and W1 here, it's these two are different. So for the, uh, for, 
uh, uh, to be mathematically correct, I have to yeah, put another index here so that this is the first node in first, uh, uh, this is the first parameter in first node, this is the first parameter in second node, and this is the first parameter in the third node, and so on. So everything inside, so you may think, yeah, this is just a one, day, a one node, and this is just another node, this is just another node, and all these things are here inside just a one layer. And that is the, the basic form. And then why do we call, uh, why do I call uh, it as a group? Because you can apply a activation function to each layer. Activation function. So the, the simplest one is that there is no activation function. That means I'm going to take the output whether it's yeah, from here or from the above, yeah, the output is just the output of a linear function. That means there is no activation function. But if I add activation function is say, for example, ReLU. And actually ReLU is, uh, it's, I forgot the name, it's rectified, uh, uh, yeah. I forgot the name, uh, but you can yeah, uh, try to find it in Google. But basically, this is just a max function. So what I mean by applying the activation function to a node means that inside node, you have a linear function. plus W2 and so on up to some node and then comma zero is gonna be the output of, of that node if you apply the ReLU on that node. And once you define your activation function, that activation function applies to all the node in the same layer. It does not affect on the previous node, but it applies to the same layer. So that's why we group, we make a group of uh, node into just one uh, layer because we wanted to apply a specific activation function to just one layer. And of course you can uh, apply the same activation for the another layer, so apply the ReLU here, apply the ReLU here, that's fine, but you cannot apply different activation function to different nodes in the same layer. Then why do we uh, apply the activation function? The reason is, actually the reason is really simple. The reason is that to incorporate the linear, no, I mean, non-linearity. Non-linearity. Uh, non I don't know if the spell is right or wrong. <clears throat> so for example, yeah, I have just here yeah, one, no, uh, one layer and then, okay, I have yeah, two layer. And in the first layer, I have two nodes. And here is a yeah, one node. And suppose that there is no activation function. So no activation and here is no activation. Then this inside this first node is W1 X1 plus W2 X2 plus, let me yeah, use just yet. Yeah, Two x uh, two columns x one and x two x two, and then in the second node there is yeah another one say w one prime x one plus w two prime x two plus b prime. 
And these two are the output of the, from the first node. Then you can take these two as your input to a node in the second layer. And then you can do, say, yeah, W double prime one for the first one and W two double prime for the second one and plus B. And that's your uh, uh, mathematical expression in this node. And then if you do the calculations, since everything is linear, what you will get is finally a linear function. Yeah, something, so A plus something plus, uh, so A1 plus something plus, uh, yeah, some, some uh, intercept. So that will be your final result. So in this case, it doesn't matter how many layers you have and how many nodes you have, it doesn't matter. It is exactly the, it will do the, the almost the same thing. But let me replace the first one as ReLU layer. Then the things are different because there is a max function and then comma zero, and there is another max function and comma zero. So the input to the second layer will be different values. This is going to be a, something like a piecewise linear functions. And then applying the linear function to piecewise linear, you will get yeah, something like this. So that's the way we incorporate the nonlinearity in our model. And ReLU is the most famous one. And at the beginning of the machine learning, the people think that, yeah, for example, the softmax function, and which is yeah, another yeah, something like yeah, this exponential and minus exponential yeah, function, something like this. Yeah. I'm not sure yet the exact form. I have to take a look. And there is uh, another function that's called 10H. And this is yeah, also yeah, another activation functions. But the recent study and the recent yeah, 10 years or yeah, about yeah, 20 years, the people find that if you use ReLU, in most cases, it will be fine. So instead of yeah, introducing the more complexity, I just wanted to stick on the ReLU. But it's okay if you wanted to use your soft, uh, activation function as softmax or 10H, yeah, whatever you want. You just uh, replace the, the, the string in the activation function arguments. So that's okay. So um, yeah. This is the, uh, the first thing that I wanted to say. And what is the normalization layer? Okay. Now let's go to the, what do we mean by normalization? So we have column one, column two, and some more, and we wanted to estimate column five. And let's suppose this is the number. And this is the input. And let's suppose C2 is say 0 0.1, it's 0 0.2, and it's 0.15. And then there is a yeah, output we will want. If you make a formula, if you make an equation with this, the problem is that this number is too big and this number is too small compare it to each other. So, so it, since this is too big, it might have a smaller coefficient. So let's say it's uh, W1 plus W2 times X2 plus some B is our Y. And if you use the original data set, without modifying anything, then since the scales 
of these two variables are different, it will affect your parameter value. And if you change, so for example, yeah, I want to change my x value a very small amount, let's say one. So by moving one uh, unit of the, the, the column one is relatively small compared to 10,000, 20,000. But if I change the value in column two by one, it will be a very big change. So we cannot compare it. Uh, so we cannot judge the, the whether comparison is uh, right or is accurate or, or is accurate or not. So that is the one of, that is the reason why we want to make it normalize. So normalize means, okay, there are three numbers. Let's take the average. And I think yeah, the average is about, oh, the average is actually yeah, this one because yeah, it's 10, 20, 15. And then every of this one is, I don't know. And then you also have a variance. And then take the square root of variance is we call the standard deviation. So let me write this standard deviation. And you will also get the, the mean and standard deviation from the column two. So instead of using the original data set, you can apply the normalization to your data set so that it can be, so the first one is your original data set minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. I don't know what this <clears throat> value is. And for the second column, you can also do the same thing. And you divide it by mu and then uh, the subtract by mu and divide by sigma. And do the same thing for your next data points minus mu. Of course, this mu is different from this one because it's mu2 divided by sigma and divided by sigma. This is sigma1, this is sigma2, and this is sigma1, and so on. Then, when, then your <clears throat> numbers, your input data is, all your input data will be probably between, say, negative three plus three. And this one is also, most of them will be inside this range. Then we can compare the coefficients of yeah, these two columns. So we can say, yeah, this one is bigger than this one because the, the range of the input data is very similar to each other. Then we can say, yeah, something is more important than the other. Uh, yeah, we can say yeah, something like that. So that's the reason why we apply the normalization layer to our uh, input data set. And sometimes it does not work. Sometimes it does not affect the accuracy or the, the loss, but sometimes it will improve the, your model's performance incredibly well. But there is no absolute uh, rules. Yeah. I want to see the last. What we are going to do for today's three hours. Yeah, this is what we are going to do for three hours. Explain students' question. Yeah. So what is the difference between loss and validation loss? Okay. We have a data set. And let's say we have 100 data points or 100 data examples. 
And then I'm going to split it into 80% will be my train and 20% will be my validation. Then your model is trying to find the, the best coefficients, W1, W2, in your, uh, in your models. So what I mean by model is layer, layer, nodes, and there are coefficients. And what we are trying to do is to find a good coefficients of the model so that the final value will be, will be very similar to our column five. So, so training data set is trying to uh, optimize, trying to yeah, minimize the, the, the loss of your model. And you can yeah, have yeah, some loss after uh, pick some um, weights and then apply those weights to your validation function. Then you will get another loss. That's the validation loss. Okay, that's the first step. And then the model is trying to change the coefficients in order to change, in order to decrease this loss, your model's loss. And it trying to, yeah, uh, the model tries to find the another parameter values, another yeah, coefficients, and then apply that find the coefficients to the validation set again, then you will have another validation loss. So in principle, if you draw the graph of the loss and the validation loss, your model is basically trying to minimize your loss. So as you increase the number of epochs, your loss will be decreased. But for the validation loss, it is just, uh, uh, you may think this uh, validation loss as uh, the test data set. So when you are trying to minimize your loss of your model, the validation loss at first tries to, uh, not try, yeah. the, at the first stage, your validation loss is, is decreased, uh, very similar to your model loss. But at some point in time, it does not, it will not be decreased anymore because that's the point that your model, yeah, your model here is overfitted. So what do I mean by overfitting? So for example, yeah, let's do yeah, some regression and let's suppose that yeah, you wanna fit a line that explains this, uh, let's say yeah, there's yeah, 100 lines, but if you just take the 80, uh, the original data set is 100 points, but I'm gonna take 80 here, and I'm gonna take 20 here. Of course, yeah, randomly, then your point is here and 20 point is here. So at the first stage, when you are trying to build your model, and it will try to build your model, and then the later one will get you a better loss. And applying to this uh, predictor model to your validation, your validation will be getting better and better. But if you train too much, then your model looks like this. It try to build every point in your training data set. And this is overqualified. So if you uh, apply this overqualified value to your the last 20%, it does not predict, it will not give you a better predictions. So that's why this red one first started to fall. And then at, po at some point in time, it does not uh, improve anymore. So that's the meaning of loss and the validation loss. 
okay, the accuracy. And for the regression problem, accuracy is not important. The reason is that the accuracy is not a good regression uh, terminology because we wanna try to minimize our loss. But you will see it, there is uh, some accuracy. And this is for the terminology for the classification. So for example, yeah, you have a cat versus dogs. And if your prediction is accurate, then your accuracy is say yeah 90% or 80% because you know the exact answer so you, and and you can say that yeah this one is right and this one is wrong so that's the meaning of the accuracy but for our regression problem there is no accuracy we can only measure the error then you may think that okay then for the classification problem so we are trying to uh maximize the accuracy, but that's not true. Uh, this is another measure, how uh, another measure to measure, another measure to uh, tell you how good your model is. But for the classification, they have another loss function. So it is still trying to minimize some errors, E-R-R-O-Rs, but in classification problems, we can also say that the, the model's accuracy is some number. So that's the terminology for the classification problem. Okay, the loss, accuracy, and prediction. So prediction, so I, I uh, already talked about the loss and accuracy. And let me yeah, clarify what these three term means. So the prediction. Is act of predicting something. So let's say we have a regression problem. And even though we did not talk about uh, much we there is a classification problem and your prediction is in regression is to predict some value because uh, okay so column five is our example so we want to predict column five and this y hat is the our prediction from our model and there might be uh, some difference between these two numbers. And for the classification problems, you are going to predict whether it is a cat or whether it is a dog. But the, the, the real output is actually, okay, cat is zero and dog is one. So it looks like you are predicting some values, but actually it is not. So the predicting yeah, value, so, its output is something like yeah, 0 0.9 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.1. And then your 0 0.9 means you are going to predict it as one, which means dog. And 0 0.5, I don't know, it depends on your choice. And But for point, uh, uh, 0.5, I don't know yet, but, but for in one, you are probably yeah, predicting it as a zero so that it is a cat. So this is the prediction. And what is a loss? Loss is the difference between these two. And then there are two different losses for regression problem. The one is mean absolute error, which is the absolute value of the error. The other one is mean squared error. So those two are the typical loss for the regression. But for the classifications, uh, this is, yeah, you may think that this is a loss. So you may think that, yeah, 0.9 minus 1 
square and then 0.5 I don't know yeah you, you may predict as 1 and 0.1 minus 0.1 minus 0 squared and add this number and this is yeah also a loss but for the classification problems there is a better way to measure how this uh, how these predictions are different from the predict uh, from the original one so they use a different type of loss function but this is also possible and then when we say accuracy oh accuracy there is no accuracy here but here the accuracy is the 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 number of correct prediction over total number of prediction is the accuracy this is the measure Okay, why does the tuning parameter only brings you a small change? What do I have to do our turn next? So, tuning parameter in our case is, was that yet that much? Uh, maybe you, you uh, use the atom and the point one, uh, 0 0.001 and that kind of thing is called the tuning parameters tuning parameters and if you use uh, this is called the, yeah, another name for this specific one is a learning rate and another tuning parameter is the say number of batches we did not talk about the batches yet, but number of batches, yeah, that kind of thing is the tuning parameters. And it uh, actually, you have to tune your uh, model at the last stage. So for example, yeah, you wanted to build a car and there is a sports car and there is just, yeah, for the, the city driving cars, and what you are trying to do is to did not decide here whether you are gonna build a sports car or the city driving car. So you are going to change the tires a little bit. Yeah, and then you are going to uh, change the, the, uh, the stiffness of your handle. But the more important thing is that you need to change the whole, the structure of your car or the engine of your car. So, the fine tuning is for the last step. So first you build your structure of your car and replace your engines and replace your brakes. And then you can change the size of your tire or you can yeah, modify the, the little shape of your car. So at the first stage, it does not gives you a, a lots of change. <laughs> okay. Okay, what does that represent? And okay, for these students, I want you to uh, watch the previous uh, lecture videos. And the brief way of saying that is to, to remember that we started with father's height and sunside and there were also lots of points and what we are trying to do is to find a line and this line is in its simplest form it's y is wx plus b so what we are trying to do is to try to find w and b now, this is the simplest form, and this simplest form 
is here. You see, a node in a layer is a function. And you are trying to find the W values and B value here. And of course, you are trying to find the fine tune, fine tune or trying to yeah, or find your another parameters here, another parameters. And then this parameter will affect to your output and this output will go to the input of your next parameter, uh, your, your, your next functions and so on. So in some sense, the neural network is a composite function. So do you remember that the math in your uh, high school, there was a uh, y is f of x, f of x, and there is uh, another function, say g of y, h is yeah, g of y, then you can write your function h as Say g of h of x, yeah, something like that. So it's called the composite function. And neural network is a composite function. So what we are trying to do is to find the uh, a certain function, say w of something plus b, and inside that something is max w x plus b comma zero plus, of course, yeah, there is another w and another w and max something plus something. And inside this x, there is yeah, another composite function and inside the x, another composite function. So you cannot do it analytically. So this function, the, if you look at just the one part, this is really simple, but once you are make it uh, inside and inside, inside, it's too complicated. And the machine learning will find the W and Bs for you to minimize the loss. And what is the loss? The output of you, from your model to the real value, and then this difference, sometimes it's absolute value or sometimes it's squared value, is a error. And this is your loss. So you are trying to minimize your loss. So how can you minimize? By just finding new value of Ws and Bs. And then since you I'm not sure whether your model will actually perform good or not. You are divided into your model into train data set and the validation data set. So validation data set is for actually for test before we have a real real big real test. So you may think that the validation data set is a small test set to see whether my train is good or not. And then once you finish your, all your training, then, then, and then you are gonna use your whole, uh, you are gonna use your whole model to uh, provide the real answer for the test data set. Why does it have to be non linear? Okay, if you are, okay, let me say you in this way. If you're happy, if you are happy with your uh, linear model, then just to use it. But there are lots of phenomena 
that linearity just cannot explain everything. You see? Suppose that this is your uh, data point, and you are trying to build a linear model, and this one, well, if you prefer this one, yeah, that's fine. But I think, yeah, the better way is to try to build something like this. Then if you look at the little piece, it is linear. But overall, we cannot say that this is linear. And if we want, we might, use, we might want it to have, yeah, something like the very smooth curve at this point. So that's for the non-linearity. Why do you think mean absolute error is better? I don't think the mean absolute is better. I don't have any preferences on mean absolute error or mean squared error. They are just two different ways. So for example, uh, so I think yeah, this is very good to take a look inside the, the actual formula. So y and y hat. And you can take the absolute value. And also you can think y and y hat squared. Of course, yeah, there is a summation and summation. And in front of the summation, there is a one over n, one over n. And don't worry too much about the n is correct or n minus one is correct. It's not relevant to our discussions because we are gonna use a lot of data. So if you divide it to one million or one million minus, they are basically the same. Uh, for the regression, the traditional regression, the statistic, statisticians prefer this one. Why? Because it is differentiable. That is the only reason statist, uh, the statisticians prefer this one. You can take the derivative of this one. But absolute value, well, if you think about the absolute value in a graphical way, we may imagine, imagine that yeah, this is the absolute value. Then actually, this is differentiable it, and this side, and this is differentiable at this side, but it is not differentiable at this point. So because of this point, the traditional statisticians afraid to use the mean absolute error. But nowadays, the machine learning try to use the mean absolute error and they don't care about this point anymore because they realize that this happens very rarely. And even if it happens, just yeah, take one point to that, okay, this is the slope of one, or this is slope of negative one, just put it on yeah, one of these yeah, two ways, and still it works fine. That's the what machine learning people find. So they, uh, yeah, some people like this one, but I like yeah, this one too, so I don't care. <laughs> 